Hello everybody and welcome back to A Sweet Journey. I am Sonia, also known as Sweet. And welcome to, I think, maybe the last uh, information that I want to share about audacity or being audacious. There's something uh, really cool about the journey, just reflecting back on all of the things. Uh, week one of this month, I was focused a little bit on kind of finding courage, but I, I was talking about it from my mom and how courageous my mom had to be when she was faced with having her fourth child and in the middle of um, getting divorced from my dad and all of that. And so it focused on that. Today, I want to talk about finding courage, but kind of where I am with finding courage, but I, I will get to that in a moment. Week two was about finding my voice. And I thought, when I think about my testimony and how I have gotten to where I am right now, finding my voice was a big part of it. I was really, really shy. And then at some point, it was like, turn me inside out, give me my microphone, put me on stage. <laughs> and so um, that second video was about that. And then last week, I talked a little bit about finding God and that process. And it was big, it was beautiful for me. Uh, the information about it, I don't know if it translates in that way, but there was something really cool about just thinking back at all of the different times that I was able to really experience God. And so today, I want to talk a little bit about finding courage, so part two, but really how my mom living into courage really have has inspired me over the years to live into courage. And so today I just want to talk a little bit about finding courage from the next phase of my life in my testimony. So if that is interesting to you, please stick around. video I talked about how I gave my life to Christ and I talked about that process and I think if I just pick back up from where I left off there I spent the next 25 years of my life all of my 20s a portion of my 30s I think no all of my 30s um, really immersed in church in serving the Lord in um, leaning into all of the things that were, I think, that build the strength that is my relationship with God now. And it happened through, like, as soon as I started with the church, I went into, like, new members' classes. I was really deliberate about that. I became, like, a, an usher at the door. Like, I wanted to get involved. One of my biggest things was, like, I need to get involved because I was trying to flip, like, my life to be really, really focused on growing my relationship with God. And so I became an usher, I became, I worked with the children, I worked with the youth. I then became a deaconess at my church, which diaconia or diaconos, something like that, is just a servant, really literally. And so I was responsible for like cleaning and that kind of thing. Um, and then I became a minister at my church and I would preach sometimes. I did a couple of women's events and really got immersed inside of serving God. One of the things that I do remember though, over the years is that I always felt like there was something that I was supposed to do. There was something I was supposed to be getting after, but I didn't know how to get to it. And I would often ask about, like I wanted to go away to this like, Christian college, or I would want to move to where one of our newer churches um, had been so that I could help with that. And so I had this hunger for that often, but I was consistently like discouraged to do that. And um, because I spent early 20s through like late 30s, going into my 40s, immersed into this one very specific way of serving God, I did not I, I didn't um, find myself making choices where I would, where somebody that was in a spiritual authority position said no to something that I thought that I could say yes. 
that's me, not the church at all. That is me. I just didn't, um, I, I felt like I was going to get wise uh, counsel and that was the wise counsel. And so I would just listen to it. And so that happened quite a bit <laughs> over the years. So I served for a, a number of years and there came a point in my life where um, my mom wasn't well and I kept having the this feeling that like something was wrong and I would go whenever something was wrong or whenever something would happen I would fly to her and I just had this horrible feeling and like for a year straight about 10 years ago for a year straight I just kept having this feeling like something's not right it's amazing it's been 10 years but um and so one time she was hospitalized she couldn't breathe and my siblings and I we went we were in Texas she was in Michigan um and so just consistently I kept having this feeling and a couple of times I'd be at lunch or dinner and I would get this horrible feeling like something's wrong and I would call and she was like, no, everything's fine, you know. And um, then just finally one day I said, do you have a surgery or anything that's happening that like maybe I should know about, I don't know. And she was like, I just had this procedure, it's no big deal, you know. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, great. And so uh, I was working at this company and I was supposed to go to the corporate office because I had just gotten a promotion to lead a team of people at my job. And I had to go to the corporate office to kind of trade off and provide uh, support to somebody who was taking my tasks. And um, anyway, we were, um, and that corporate office was in Denver, Colorado. And so um, the morning that I was, actually the evening that I was packing, because I pack usually the night before, sometimes the morning I, I was packing, um, I had talked to my mom a couple of times since the procedure and I thought everything had gone well but then my sister called and she was kind of hysterical and she was saying um, something's wrong like mom's not okay I was like what do you mean mom's not okay and she was like she's not okay she hasn't been awake in like a couple of days and I was like wait what like I just talked to her and she said yeah you talked to her a few days ago and my, my heart dropped. And I was trying to make a decision, like what do I need to do? And again, because of the way that I was, the way that I thought, um, my immediate thing was to call a spiritual leader. And so I did that. Called a spiritual leader and I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to go to Denver. My mom is not waking up from like this procedure. I don't know what to do. And so the person prayed with me and then gave me counsel that uh, you know, you've been afforded the opportunity to go to your mom all year. And so the advice was like, go to, go finish off the thing with your job. And so I did make that choice. And I think it was a choice that I was supposed to make because it was true. Like I, I felt like, like I couldn't put, it was just, I couldn't put my finger on what was happening, but I knew something bad was happening. Anyway, I got in the plane. I was just about to take they were just telling us to shut our phone down and as I was shutting my phone down um, my sister had sent me a text saying that they just called cold blue to my mom's room and my phone shut down and I sat there and I was numb and I was in complete disbelief I, I, I had no idea how to process what was happening and the entire flight, I remember I just cried. I was just sitting there and tears was just, tears were just rolling down my face. And, um, but I remember looking out of the window and it was beautiful, it was a beautiful day. This big old beautiful white clouds and it was sunny and the sky was really blue. It was beautiful, I remember that. But in my heart, I was like, I just lost my mom. I think I just lost my mom. And so, when I got to where I was going for the first time ever, I didn't rent a car. I always rent a car, I didn't, but the person who picked me up, I got in the car and I said, hi, I need to turn my phone back on, um, but I think I just lost my mom. And so I just, you know, I, she was like, what do you need? What do you, and I was like, I don't know. But um, 
I did, I turned my phone back on. It was like ding, 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 ding. ding. And I had, I lost my mom 10 years ago. And um, I, I have never in my life before felt homeless, but I felt completely homeless and lost. And I had no idea what to do with that. And I think the next thing that happened is where, where I had to make courageous decisions and it was just hard. This is very, very hard. So, um, I, I remember just, it all is really, really, it's a little foggy just because during that time, I just felt incredibly lost and hurt. And um, I could not believe that I lost my mom. It just felt unreal. Um, but the thing that I thought was interesting is the ministries that I was a part of, like the different areas that I was serving in. Um, they were um, pretty much encouraging me to serve through it. Like, that's what you do. If you're grieving, you serve through it. You just go in harder. And I just, I, I was like, I, I, like, I can't. <laughs> I'm, I, like, I am heartbroken. I can't, you know? And, and then after that, before and after that, I just had a string of losses. Boom, boom, boom. People really close to me. My sister, my oldest sister who lived with my mom um, was battling colon cancer when we lost my mom. And then she ended up dying that same, that next year, same time, the, the, the following year. And um, I had a really good friend of mine who I was minister. We were ministers together and he was like a brother to me, lost him. Really good friend of mine. Um, just, anyway, just a string of loss. And I was begging God for help. I was like, please help me, please help me. I just really need your help, really need your help. I don't know what to do, but I really, really need your help. And I had this desire to move to Colorado. I remember it every time I would go to Colorado, it just felt really um, peaceful. Something about it just felt really right. I kept wanting to go, but you know, I knew if I asked to go, the answer was no. And, um, and I know whatever judgment you might have about that, I would absolutely keep that to yourself because this is just this is my testimony where I was. Um, but really wanted to move to Colorado. Um, I, I had put myself in this really interesting position where I was desperately wanting for the first time, I feel like in my life, to make a decision that I felt like was the best decision for me. Not the best decision for the ministry, not for anybody else, but the best decision for me. And I made that decision and it was hard, hardest decision I've ever made in my life. But it was um, the courage to actually make a decision to move to Colorado. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of additional information that I could probably add in that space, but I think more than anything, um, th there are lessons in um, in this space that I just want to, the things that I'm still learning, because I still struggle sometimes. I had people uh, from my church who were telling me that I was walking away from God, people who told me I was walking away from my call, which was very difficult, and um, just a, a lot of interesting response to that choice that I was making and uh, it made it really really hard it made it difficult but one lesson that I learned in that is this I just and this is a lesson that I believe like it's for everyone one of the things that God has taught me in this 10 years that I've been here in Colorado is that his choice for me doesn't it's not in a, it doesn't have to live in a location. I don't. I didn't walk away from that church and then suddenly walk away from my connection to God. And that's really big because I think that some people think that they do. I did not. And though 
I think I spiraled for years trying to figure out, like, like I really did believe that I'd walked away from my call. I'd walked away from the thing that God wanted me to do. The thing that I do know is God is omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He knows everything. Time is not a constraint to him. My choices don't change his mind about me. I, I do not believe that. He, there's a scripture that says, if you make your bed in hell, he is there. And so I believe there's a scripture that says he that started a good work in me is able to complete it. I believe that. I really do. It might not look the way that I think or I thought it would look. It might not look like that. But his promise for me is still his promise for me. And I think that's a, a lesson that we have to know as we are serving God, we're walking with God. Um, sometimes humanity can project and make us feel like God is somehow surprised or disappointed. And I just believe that God's love for me and his purpose for my life continues to be a part of my life. And that's a big lesson, even though it doesn't look the way I thought it was going to look. So that's lesson number one. The second lesson I think is more about our personal relationship with God and how we communicate with God and how we allow him co to communicate with us. Um, I spent over two decades of my life believing that if I heard something or if I thought I heard something from God, um, but somebody in a spiritual authority said no, then whatever it is that I thought I heard from God was null and void. And I think when I was younger in the faith, I really did need that when I was young. And I mean, not that I don't need wise counsel now, because I do, and I still get wise counsel. However, I get wise counsel for exactly that. I go and I seek wise counsel for somebody to help me in decision making, but I don't, like that decision is not the decision. Then I go and I pray to God and I ask him, like, what are you saying to me? What would you like for me to do? And, and I, I, I really get still and hear him. And I think that there's something in that that's a big lesson. It's like, yes, absolutely. Have people in your life who you can trust and who you know are spiritually sound. Um, the scripture says there's safety in a multitude of counsel. I believe in that. I still believe in that. And sometimes courage comes in a different package. Sometimes courage is stepping out on what you really believe God said to you truly trusting that that same God, like I think about all the times that I preached messages, all the times that I would speak into people's lives because God put something on my heart or I was in prayer and when I was in prayer, God said something to me. That is the same God that I talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. That is the same God who directs my steps. He orders my steps. He didn't, he doesn't leave me. He doesn't forsake me. And so courage for me, and maybe for some of you who are watching, is trusting that. Trusting that you can actually hear the voice of God and you can actually be directed by him. That you are actually co-mingling with the Holy Spirit, that he can actually like help you make decisions. And so this, again, to be clear, it is not take one and do away with the other, no. It is actually taking wise counsel and understanding how you know and hear God and letting those work together and, and really trusting what God is saying. And I, there's something in that that I think is a lesson. It is a lesson for me. It is incredibly courageous in that I, I just did not relate in that way. I felt like if a spiritual leader said no to something, that was it. It was no and that was it. And um, it's a big lesson, and it's a hard lesson. <sighs> so I continue to believe God, and I continue to step out. There are some things that I am um, really, really believing God for, and I am finding courage in this season. Mm, makes me emotional. I am finding courage to step out and be who God has always called me to be. He all. He, he already showed me, he already said it, and I'm just finding courage to be authentically, audaciously that person. And my prayer is that you do the same. My prayer is that you don't lose your confidence. 
okay that is that thank you all so much for watching thank you if you enjoyed this video please provide a, a thumbs up i uh, really appreciate it as i am uh doing uh, this in and of itself is audacious and courageous just so you know but um please subscribe if you have not i'd love to hear you if you'd like to leave comments and i will see you next time thank you so much